Where are all the other Coffee Lake boards? Valid question. We've been milking Z370 for several months now since it's the only thing out there currently for modern Intel CPUs. But the issue for the blue team has been this. No one wants to pair a cheaper, budget-oriented Intel offering with the Z370 chipset. Sure, Z-series chipsets are stacked with features, but for that matter, so are their H-series counterparts. In fact, one of the only differences in most cases is overclockability. Think KZ for Intel. Killzone. I don't know, come up with your own acronym. K-series CPUs with Z-series motherboards, period. All other SKUs should be paired, in my opinion, with H and B boards. So where are they? First up, the boards in particular we're discussing in this video are the supposed H370 and B360 motherboards. Falling back to Skylake, the naming scheme has gone H170, H270, and now with Coffee Lake H370. For the business lineup, B150, B250, and B3, which should be 50, but had to jump to 60 since AMD already ripped the B350 chipset. There's also a supposed H310 chipset coming, its root name stemming from Skylake as well, the H110 chipset. That's a lot of names, but what you should know is that the delay in these launches has hindered Intel's sales of locked SKUs, namely the 8700, 8400, and 8100. No one wants to spend more money than they must, especially if one of the board's main features is overclocking, impossible with non-K SKUs, save a few exceptions with Skylake, more on that right here. So what's taking them so long? A big reasons had to do with power consumption. According to a few Intel reps, the jump in core counts across all models have rendered previous Gen Z 270 boards inadequate from power delivery standpoints. In particular, the VRM and on-die management systems created long-term instabilities earlier in the testing phase with vendors, so in certain scenarios, systems would crash on account of inadequate voltage regulation at the mainboard level, and it appears as though this was because Intel relied heavily on previous-gen Kaby Lake architecture to push the Coffee Lake launch. Kaby Lake SKUs have lower core counts and power consumptions across the board, which is why Z270 required a few tweaks to Z370, and this would also explain why Z370 will likely be succeeded by Z390 later this year, essentially a proper revision, what it should have been. I can't point to any leaked document to confirm this, I doubt any Intel rep would admit it anyway, but it's my belief based on the research I've done personally that Intel pushed Z370 as a quick and dirty response to AMD's release of Ryzen. Same goes for X299 and Threadripper. I talked with Steve from Gamers Nexus a bit earlier who had similar suspicions, I'm quoting him now. Now, it is the understanding of Gamers Nexus that the Intel launch date for its Z370 platform, along with the launch date of X299, was pulled in to be earlier than initially intended. Our understanding is that X299 got moved forward earlier, by around three weeks, and that Z370 got moved forward by an indeterminate amount of time. We don't have an exact explanation for why the times were moved, but one could reasonably assume that X299 was moved forward to snipe Threadripper, and that Z370 was moved forward to either 1, catch the end of year 2017 holiday sales and the platform was prepared to go, or two, limit the window that Ryzen 1 remained highly competitive. This is shown by pushing the 8600K and 8400 early as they competed directly. Steve also went on to point out that Intel had very limited stock of the 8700K when it initially launched at quarter year four. So in a sense, Intel rushed to have these items on the market sooner than anticipated in order to combat the extreme competitiveness of the Ryzen lineup. It's pretty cool to be able to say that the underdog at this time was able to rush the blue team giant into a premature launch. That at least is what the information at hand suggests. So in conclusion, H370 and B360 chipsets aren't late, Z370 was just early on account of Intel's forced hand. When should we see these lower grade chipsets on the market though? Expect sometime in late March or early April of this year. Maybe then some of us can start recommending budget oriented systems with Coffee Lake CPUs. But for now, particularly with B350 motherboards taken into account, Ryzen's values still reigns supreme in my book. We'll see after April or so if my opinion changes. I'd like to thank Steve for confirming my story and making this video possible. If it wasn't for him, uh, kind of validating my suspicions, I wouldn't have had the guts to release this video because a lot of it is kind of just making your own conclusions based on what we do know. And it's just, it's just kind of funny, in my opinion, to, to see Intel have to rush something because AMD was so successful at launch. By the way, if you like this video, maybe like the story, let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Thumbs down for the opposite. Subscribe to Gamers Nexus if you haven't already. I don't know why you wouldn't be subscribed to them, but be sure to do that via the link in this video's description. Stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.